Greetings and salutations, and welcome back to the Project 1999 EverQuest Classic Server with your host, Relinar. Recently, we have been selling everything in our inventory. We've sold all of our bandit armor, which is why Relinar is naked. We have sold all of our null scalps, which I have recorded previously. We've sold all of our javelins, we've sold all of our spider silks, all of our high quality bear pelts. In fact, the only remaining piece of inventory that we have for sale is five stacks of leather padding. We have sold everything else. So, you may be wondering, what is Ralnar's current bank account balance? Well, I'm here to tell you that it is a whopping 177 plat. Because we have just ordered a 13 piece set of Teardal culture armor, and that's going to cost us 4,800 plat. Now I'm very excited about this because it's going to look fantastic and we're not going to have to worry about gear upgrades until level 50 or so. Keep in mind that this is a starting from scratch guide. This is not a how to play a warrior optimally guide. So although the Teardal Culture Armor isn't optimal for a budding warrior, for the purposes of this guide and my own personal fashion sense, it's perfect. Now creating the culture armor is going to take a little time so it won't be delivered for another week or so. And I thought I would outline a little bit on how cultural armor is made in case you were curious. So firstly you're going to need a brewer. A brewer makes tempers. They take a bunch of ingredients and make a liquid out of it that is used in the smithing process. If you are familiar with history or high fantasy you'll know that tempering the metal that you've made during the smithing process is a pretty important step. So brewers make tempers. Now specifically you're going to have to go out and farm or buy some pretty rare ingredients. For Teardal armor specifically you're going to need some Neriac nectar which is kind of a home brew here in Neriac. That's the easy part to get. You're going to need some elven blood which is collected after you kill an elf and you're going to need two essences of shadow per temper. The essences of shadow drop off of shadowed men, which are level 35-ish mobs, so a little bit out of the range for Relinar to actually farm himself. So we're going to allow the, the smith to, to worry about that, and we'll just pay him the money. So first you need the brewer that makes tempers. Next you need an imbuer. The imbuer imbues gems with powers of the caster's deity. So these are priest classes. You have your clerics, you have your druids, and you have your shaman. They will basically take a gem and imbue it with the power of their deity. Specifically for Teradal, you're going to need a sapphire. Those cost 100 plant each, by the way. And you're going to have a Teradal priest that worships Inarok imbue that sapphire with hate. And then you're going to use that imbued sapphire in the smithing process. So, we need a brewer, mix the temper, need an imbuer that imbues gems. Thirdly, you're going to need an enchanter. The enchanter enchants large bricks of the metal you're using for smithing. So, for Teardal, that's going to be adamantium. Now, these cost about 20 plat per large brick. So, you hand the enchanter 8 bricks, because of course, in classic EverQuest crafting, nothing stacks. So you hand the enchanter eight bricks, and they have to enchant them one by one, and then hand them back. And then you just go back and forth until you have enough bricks. It's a very time-consuming and mana-intensive process, because casting those spells aren't cheap. So you get your brewer, you get your tempers. You have your imbuer, you get your imbued gems, and now you have your enchanted large bricks of metal, and adamantium, in the case of Dark Elves. Now you're actually ready to smith because you have all the materials. So the smith takes three enchanted large bricks and makes a block out of it and then hammers that block into a sheet. Now if you only had sheets to make armor with it'd be pretty stiff so you need some jointing in there too. So the smith would take one enchanted large brick, hammer that out into two rings and each ring would be made into an enchanted piece of jointing. Then, after you get all that, you're ready to do your armor combines. So you take your sheets, your jointing, your imbued gem, the temper, 
a piece of leather padding and the actual mold for the armor item that you're making and you do the smithing combine and then boom you'll have your teardal cultural armor piece assuming you beat the 5% failure rate no matter what your skill is. So to round up the numbers you basically the smith is needs 24 sheets for a 13 piece set and 13 jointings, 13 paddings, 13 sapphires, 13 tempers, and of course all the molds for each of the pieces. So that adds up to a lot of money, actually. And of course, every stage of the process is subject to that 5% craft failure rate, uh, no matter what your crafting skill is. There's always going to be that 5% rate. So we don't have our armor yet, but it's on order, so what do we do till then? So that's actually what this video is about. I wanted to explore the armor dyeing process. So what I went ahead and did was I made some fine steel plate and then I dyed it just to see what it looks like because I've always been curious. Now this was pretty expensive. It shouldn't really go in the starter guide, uh, starting from scratch guide because it was more for fun and curiosity more than actually making a profit out of it. But I'm going to keep it in here anyway because you know, Relinar is in the center of it. So I made a bunch of wrist pieces and then I dyed them just to see what the colors were. So I can go into the actual dyeing process later. What I want to do first is go over the available dyes. Now these are items you're going to have to extract color from to make the dye. So the available colors are blue, green, red, yellow, black, brown rust, and red rust. Okay, those are the available colors. Now, during the ex during the dyeing process, you can apply these things called resins to the actual color. One resin makes the darkest color. Adding two resins makes the medium color and adding a third resin will make the light color. So every color has dark, medium, and light except brown rust and red rust. They have only one color. We can go over where to find these things later, but for now let's just take a look at what the results are. So here we have the dark blue fine plate. Let's put that on and see what it looks like. Now remember, one cool thing about EverQuest Classic is that each race has its own aesthetic per armor type. So this color and this graphic for plate on a dark elf might look different than on any other race. So this dark blue on a dark elf, this dark blue on a dark elf is actually a, a pretty gray color. So let's see what the plain blue looks like. And now we actually get a blue and it's a very close match to the inky skin of the Dark Elf, which uh, could be interesting. And then we also have the Pale Blue. Now this is much lighter, and actually this is the color of High Elf Culture Armor, if you've ever seen that. So that's pretty interesting. And let's see, let's look at some reds. Here is the dark red. Uh, this is called Crimson. And you can see it's not actually very dark on the Dark Elf. Here we have the Plain Red, which is actually uh, pretty dark. And this color is very close to the color of Rubicite, which is a very popular Fashion Quest armor set that no longer drops, so it's very expensive. And I believe the Breastplate has some regen on it. Another reason why that is, it ends up being expensive. So if you wanted to look like you have Rubicite, you could just dye your armor red. And here's the rose, which looks like a little brighter color than the crimson. Is that correct? Yeah. The crimson is a little muted, and the rose is a little brighter than that. Interesting. Here we have some blacks. So here is the default black, which is a little darker than that blue, the dark blue. Yeah, this kind of is like a steel blue almost. Now that we are actually seeing the dark uh, black. On that. So that's the normal black. 
here's the gray. This is the middle one. And here is the slate, which is going to be the quote unquote light gray, which is pretty bright. That definitely looks more like a paladin color uh, for our dark elf tastes. And here we have the red rust, which again looks like the rose. The rose is a little darker and a little brighter, but the red rust is pretty close. And finally, we have the brown rust. Now, this is interesting. It's more like a muted gold than a brown. Now, unfortunately, I did not have time to gather or buy uh, greens and yellow dyes, so I don't have those to show for you. However, I thought it would be interesting to see the full effect of the dyed armor. So I made a couple of um, I made a couple of seven piece sets. So here we have the brown rust, which cause I, I just thought that was very interesting. So let's put this on and just check out what it looks like. I kinda like this muted gold color. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. And the other one I really liked was just the plain black. So I want to put that on and see what it looks like. Now that looks very good and very appropriate for a Dark Elf Warrior of Inarok. I am going to go with this one. Now, after making all of these fine steel pieces, unfortunately, my blacksmithing skill only went up by two, which I was a little disappointed by. I mean, ten would have been great, but um, two, really? That's just, that's just it. So that's all I really wanted to go over today, just for fun. Um, the die, which I will go over momentarily, costs about 600 plat total. And each seven piece set cost about 500 plat to make. I mean, there were some failures involved, let me tell you. Uh, so I spent about 1600 plat just doing these experiments, which of course, you know, you shouldn't do, it's not part of the starting from scratch guide. I just want to do it for fun and I was very curious. So now I want to go over uh, the die table, which I'll link uh, in the description below. I'm going to keep this one on, I think, until we get our Teradal cultural armor delivered. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, so the available die colors are blue, green, red, yellow, black, brown rust, and red rust. Blue comes from permafrost crystals over in permafrost that drop off the goblins there. Green comes from evergreen leaves, which are ground spawns in Greater Fey Dark, which sounds to me like very hard to gather. So that's why we don't have them. Red comes from fungus that drops off of mushroom people in Upper Guck, Lower Guck, and I believe Sibilis. That is called Sarcoscypha fungus. Yellow comes from jack-o'-lantern fungus, which I think the jack-o'-lanterns are in Kinos Hills or maybe West Karana, something like that. Very far away from here, and I just didn't make the time to go farm some. Black comes from charcoal, which drops off of earth elementals. Brown rust drops off of fire elementals. I'm sorry, brown rust comes from rusted oxide, which drops from fire elementals. Red rust comes from iron oxide, which drops again from earth elementals. And again, you apply the resin, the number of resins for how light of color you want. Uh, you apply one resin to get the dark color, two resins to get the medium color, and then three resins to get the lightest color. And just repeating, brown rust and red rust have only one color, so there's no uh, no variation there. You can see, hey, we got our first, our very first inspect here, and Shadow looking at our equipment because he's wondering, what am I wearing? 
another fun thing about fashion questing. So I wanted to quickly outline what is the actual process to do all this dining. Let me tell you, it's EverQuest Classic. It has to do with crafting, so again, it's going to be convoluted. Firstly, you have to travel all the way to the Wrath Mountains to buy stacks of resin, empty vials, jars of acid, and jars of lacquer. Now the resin was surprisingly expensive at five plat each, so to do all this dyeing, like I just mentioned, cost me about 600 plat total. Then you need to create a potter. Yes, a potter that creates pottery. And then travel to Nariac Third Gate to buy stacks of medium jar sketches. Then you need to make your extract. To make extract, you need to be a rogue or a shaman. Rogues use the mortar and pestle. Shaman use the medicine bag to do these combines. For my case, I used a rogue with a mortar and pestle. What you do is you combine water flask, an empty vial, and the dye material that you've gathered, e.g. your permafrost crystals or your charcoal or whatever, whatever dye you're making. So you combine the water flask, the empty vial, and the dye material to get your extract. Then you take your potter over to a kiln and you combine an unfired medium container and a quality firing sheet to get a medium clay jar. Now this is a container so you're going to need an extra bag slot to do this. Then you open that container and then you put in the, the extract that you made and the number of resins you want and hit combine and that turns into a die. And then you finally get all of that to your smith who in the forge combines it on an armor piece, the dye, a jar of acid, and the jar of lacquer. And of course this step is subject to the 5% failure rate, so if you fail, you get the item back, but you lose all of the dye components, including the dye. So that is pretty much um, the quick outline on how to make dye. It actually took me a really long time uh, to do this. So that was just a bit of fun I thought I would share with you, and the reason why we're in Nariac Third Gate, next to this very psychedelic fluorescent graffiti I'm going to go with, because we needed the adic adequate lighting, actually, to uh, see, the, see the color of the armor, basically. So this was a pretty fun process, though, again, I admit freely and openly that it's not the most optimal, but it is fun and it is fashion questing. Uh, the Velius armors make these fine steel plate sets pretty obsolete because although they do have good AC and weight, uh, for example, a full set of bronze compared to a full set of fine steel plate, the fine steel plate is going to have 25% more armor class and 25% less weight. So that's clearly um, that's clearly an upgrade an upgrade from bronze. But compared to something like crustacean shell armor, uh, it's not very comparable because the crustacean shell, which drops in values, is going to have high AC and it's also going to have a lot of stats on it too, like stamina. So it's very hard to compete. But if you want a fashion quest, you definitely can. You get your seven pieces of appearance armor, and you still have all these other slots to fill up for stats. So it's possible, although not optimal. The other thing about Velius armor is it's getting pretty cheap. You can buy a, f a seven or eight piece set of crustacean shell armor for about a thousand plat, and that includes a shield. So like I said previously, this seven piece set costs 500 plat to make. So not really uh, comparable. It's going to be more optimal to spend that extra 500 plat. But this is just something I, I wanted to do for fun. So, what comes next? Well, I am going to go hunt some more gnolls to replenish my 
bank account because I basically broke again. Of course, I mean that's pretty much life of Relinar. Farm stuff, go broke. Buying stuff. So, that's all good. And then, after my armor is completed and delivered, I'm going to head over to Highhold Keep. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to collect no... Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to collect Goblin Ears to sell. That'll be the next stage uh, of, of our little adventure here. And another reason why I actually wanted to do no hunting is because I wanted to not be killed on sight to the banker in Highhold Keep since I'm going to spend a long time there. So I'm going to farm some no scalps and then sell some and then turn in some. That's sort of my plan in my next step. So the next time we meet, I will have a full set of Teardal Cultural Armor. And until then, safe travels.